UFO Alien Invasion version 2.4. I'm pretty excited. We're, we're going to be doing a Let's Play of this. This is the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a very long time. We're just going to drop the hammer and get right into this. This is version 2.4. And um, in this one... In this particular version, the nation happiness is kind of difficult to maintain. It seems... It, 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 the, the, the last game that I did of this, it lasted about two months. What would happen was the Middle East would continually be displeased and shut me down. So, in this one, I'm going to try to appease these fucking guys by uh, having a base out here. But despite them, I built it in Israel. Which, it, it, by the way, ni nice touch by the uh, developers that, that Israel's part of the EU. So, in, in 2084, that's still going on, which is a very uh, optimistic view of humanity. Back stateside. Now, in the... In the um, the backstory to this game, it's it, it's an in, incident in Mumbai that that initially kicks all this off. So, of course, being the um, non-fuck-giving commander of, of XCOM, I'm sorry, Phalanx, uh, that I am, where do I build it? Right in the heart of the South. And that's where it fucking is gonna stay. I got my three SAM sites. Fuck you if you got a problem with it. Okay, hold on a sec. I will not bore you with the micro. I know, half the XCOM uh, clips that I watch, people are, seem to, uh, to uh, attribute some great amount of entertainment value to, uh, to watching micromanagement go down. Like, okay, well, I'm gonna give this guy a pistol, because, you know, you, you want to have a backup weapon for, um, if your primary runs out. It's good to have a backup pistol. So far, I have managed to avoid pissing off uh, Europeans and Arabs. <laughs> like we give a fuck about that in the deep fried, bitch. But um, I guess I have to because they'll cut my funding and then aliens will take over the fucking war, which they're gonna do anyway. It's futile to, to resist, but we'll resist for a little while at least. I mean, there's no ending to this game. They didn't program one in yet. It's still a work in progress. There's no end to this, but it, we'll resist it for a little bit. We're gonna do a mission. This is gonna be exciting. Oh my, oh my god. All right, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hold on. Here we go. Fun times are just around the fucking corner. Um. I, now, I have to run this in an 8x6 window. It's the only way that I can get something approaching an acceptable frame rate. So, it's, it probably looks like... Between, like, the, the, the YouTube compression and all that, it probably looks more like original XCOM than anything else. But let me reassure you that this... You are, in fact, watching the 2008 or 9 version... And the latest version of it, which is from this very year. Where is this, um, fabled enemy soldier that my guys are seeing? Oh, he's way the fuck over there. Yeah, that's... How, how are they even seeing him exactly? Oh, okay, through here. No, actually, no, I'm still not understanding it. Are they seeing, like, fucking... Like, a square inch of the, this dude's jumpsuit, and... I do love the aliens in this. This looks like something out of, like... Like, how bad is the... You can practically see the zipper coming off of this. It's fine. You'll have to give me a second. It, it's early. I'm not used to alien busting at such an early hour. They gave me a range of, uh, soldiers. Ranging from bad to extra bad. I have one guy who's kind of half-decent with a sniper rifle. So I gave him the sniper. And then three dudes with machine heavy machine guns. Which is supposed to be a, a more limited uh, use gun than that. But uh, I, got, I got dudes just rolling with that. Gin sandwich. Gin sa I'll have a gin sandwich, please. 
Everybody just pile into this building. Something good has to be in here. How come I only have... Oh, okay. This, I don't... Okay, guys, get... Once you deploy, make sure you get off and go behind... the fucking jet exhaust. Just chill out behind there. It'll be fine. Just go... Go somewhere. This is a fairly small... Ma <laughs> this is like... About five square feet of map. If you can't find aliens in this, then no alien hunter you. And Keiko Air Effect. I do love that. I mean, this game adheres to the grand XCOM tradition of just taking foreign names and chucking them into a blender. So you get Keiko Arafat and uh, Magdalena Al Hussein. So Hussein and Arafat right together at last. Delightful. I won't have him on my squad. Deep fried. Another enemy spot. Another one. That was a nice throw. That got within about fucking 50 yards of my dudes. Not. <laughs> Civilians. It's, um,. I'm glad to see that they're uh, doing their part in, in blocking me from getting to this dude in here. Yeah, one thing that I wish they did with XCOM, or any of these games really, is, is when there's civilians being as useful as these ones. If they could, uh, like, alert you to enemy... Like, assuming I didn't know that there was... Uh, uh, an asshole in here. If, if this guy could be like, yo, there's a fucking guy in there. But, um... You know what? Fuck this guy. He wants to stand right there. It's a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, so that's probably gonna strain relations a bit. Nice going, Jin Sandvik. More like shit, Sandvik. Well, it's my decision I'm gonna have to live with. So our first kill... <laughs> ...in this entire campaign. <laughs> Hopefully that's not gonna set the tone for... I probably should have used something other than the shock. Actually, I could have... Okay, yeah, I definitely could have just um, shot across this desk... ...and not endangered this... Well, it's, you know... You live and learn... Well, this guy doesn't live, but I learn from his death. That's what counts. And had he lived, maybe he'd learn a thing or two about getting in the crossfire. You've been caught up in the crossfire! You did get caught up in the crossfire. And you had to pay the price. And I mean seriously, it takes like fucking six gauge rounds to kill anything in this game. He goes out with one, fuck that. He deserves to go out. So hopefully... I, I guess this whole not pissing off nations thing uh, that, that I'm trying to achieve with this playthrough. We pretty much got off to the worst foot possible on that front. We, we, gotta, we gotta cover this up somehow. We gotta, like, just put the shotgun in his hand. Be like, look, he was terror. He was so consumed with terror when he saw that uh, this frightful alien. <laughs> This realistic and spooky alien. He just fucking shot himself in the face. Um, from a distance of about, you know, five yards. And, uh... Oh, I guess we'll have to deal with this guy, too. <laughs> Listen, you better corroborate this fucking story, pal. I will sick Keiko Arafat. And Tashihira Gaddafi on your ass so quick. I'd like the Jin Sandvik, please. It's a nice formation I've got my guys in. That is so not in any textbook of how you're supposed to do things. Alright, so let, let's try to minimize civilian casualty inflicted by our guys for once. Um... So, so far, we've killed as many aliens as civilians, so I, I, I think that we're, we're, we're starting to make some progress. 
And it was the same unit, so I mean, really, it's a double kill when you think about it. Double kill. It's an achievement. That, that should be unlocked. I should get special hats or something for these fucking soldiers. <sighs> Meanwhile, back here. Try not to kill anybody else, please. I know. I told you to do it, but... Oh, here we go. No human shields to save you this time? Okay, so... Looking kind of dicey, I guess. Alright, that is not what I meant for this guy to do. Oh, wow. Standing in the uh, most obstructive spot possible. Magdalena Al Hussein. Cutting through men like a buzzsaw. <laughs> Honestly, that fucking troop deserved what happened to it. See, I'm gonna have Jin Sand... Tell me that's who died. Oh, no. Magdalena Al Hussein got gone through like a buzzsaw. All right, well... This has been... I can say without hyperbole, the worst fucking insertion that I've ever had in one of these games. Lost one of my dudes. Killed a fucking... Yeah. This game does not have the, um, mission six, you know, successful or, like, extra successful, um, notifier at the, at the end of each mission that the original XCOM did, but I think we can file that under the clusterfuck category. Or not clusterfuck. It was really... It was as much of a clusterfuck as, as could be, considering that there was only, like, two aliens. We managed to... Um, to have the killing of two aliens cost us the most that it possibly could. So off to a bad start. Hold on. We're going to save all of this, by the way. There's no turning back. Okay, more micro. Hold on. So already, um, this playthrough is pretty much in the fucking tank, in the space of one mission. Um, on the plus side, we do have a pretty nice defense network set up for the United States, which is <laughs> the important thing. We, we need to get back on their good side after killing that civilian. Oh, please fly right into my defensive network. Just like in real life, you can't get near Newark without coming under heavy fire. I guess at this point we will now deploy the intercept craft, assuming that it can uh, withstand the vicious onslaught being dished out by our Newark branch. Look at this. Flawless. Where's my uh, upgraded nation status? because I need that. Okay, a crashed UFO mission. Autumn, I'm going to... Yeah, we're going to be entering... They, they let you do auto missions. Um auto-completions of missions in this, which, in in the last couple of plays... I, I, I hesitate to call them playthroughs, because I only got, like, to about my first uh, laser research project, and then it just shut down on me for, for one reason or another. But... I used to use that a lot, because the way I play this game, I don't actually give a fuck so much about, um, like, protecting the world from UFOs. I basically, I just want to get the research in, and, and I was like that with XCOM, uh, the original, and, and... Hell, Apocalypse as well, Terror from the Deep. Um, I just want to get the research in, and shoot the blaster launcher, which I don't think is in this. Or if it is, I have not seen it yet. And we'd probably know, because, like, on the first turn, an alien would just pop it up and go... 
and um, and that would be game. And we'd have to restart this about 12 times if it was really true to the uh, to the original XCOM spirit. But I digress somewhat. Where are these? Uh, okay, they're all by the uh, the crash there. It looks like they survived. They survived a pretty nasty wreck, um, but they're all intact. So I'm glad to see that. Yeah, just look at the menace of these aliens. If you could see them from the front... But let me just put it this way. You don't want kids in the room when you see these terrifying aliens from, from the front. The menace is just too severe. But no, when I, when I play XCOM, it's just like I just buzz through everything. I'll blow off missions. I'll blow off fucking terror missions just to, to get like two weeks down the road on, on a research project just so I can finish it. Because I'll be like this close to getting a research project done. And then I'll be like, oh, you've got to go to fucking Laos or something. Deal with a terror mission. And I'll just bypass and be like, listen, guys, I'm sorry that you lost a couple of people or a lot of people in that uh, alien attack, but I got research that I got to get done, and now I've got a, uh, a, a stun grenade that I can throw. So, to me, it was worth it. Maybe not to you. Maybe you don't understand the value, but there will be some to me later on. And um, I guess this game... You, this uh, spiritual reboot or whatever the fuck you want to categorize it as um, doesn't doesn't really appreciate that that approach to it. Raybat, I decided to give uh, my replacement for that chick who died uh, a flamethrower. It's probably the worst fucking spot she could be in with that, but you know, I made that decision. I'm gonna have to live with it. Well, she's going to have to live with it and, and probably die as a result of it uh, if those aliens get to crack off some shots at her. And they do have the sight line to pull that off, I believe. Oh, that didn't sound good. You'll be okay. Don't worry about it. In this, um, they don't have the... like the bleeding wounds from the... Uh, from, from original XCOM. I'm dis- I am disappoint. Pavel, are you gonna let him just pop you like that, dude? Did you see that guy fucking shot you, bro? You gotta go handle that, man. Come on. We'll kind of try to simulate the, uh, the action cam that they have in... ...in the new XCOM. That's right. That is fucking right. My what? What is uh? What is this? The Cobra Kai logo on the back of his fucking doji. He looks like a Dragon Ball Z. Like he's. <sighs> Whatever. It's too early for me to be playing this. It's fine. There you go. You did. You avenge yourself. That's what counts. Here we. You know what? Okay, you don't have enough. Well, you've got just enough for full auto. Fuck it. That's what's up. XCOM is not playing games this time around. It's a good thing there weren't any civilians between... I mean, that's another upswing to not taking the terror missions. Is that I wouldn't rack up any civilian kills. Okay. You gotta get up nice and close. <laughs> Just walk up to the guy and plug him with a 12-gauge. It'll be fine. You might take da- Look, you don't even have bleeding damage to worry about. What are you talking about? Don't... You'll be fine. Trust me. The, uh... Those Middle Eastern nations are gonna love us for this. Oh, we have to go up. Ooh. Awesome. You're probably going to get shot, or at least shot at. I think you're going to be okay, though. Oh, this guy's not playing around. 
So you're gonna walk up on me? I'm gonna walk up on you. I do respect his, uh... Balls. The, uh, full, uh that, that worked pretty well last time. I think we're gonna try that again. Uh, yep. Yeah. Lesson learned, uh, firing 20 rounds at a dude from about 10 feet away pays off pretty nicely. Okay, so at least this time they were responsible for all of the civilian casualties. So I think we're making progress here. And uh, I, I think that's about as good a note as any uh, to, to cap this, this initial episode off. Victory indeed. And, oh, okay, we've got to the point where, um, you've got to sell the, the UFO. This is, this is like a big part of the game, where, and, and, and a major way that you influence the, the happiness of nations is by selling you, by choosing who you're going to sell it to. And it basically gets to a point where you're not really worried about the price, it's just whoever's the most pissed off at you, you have to kind of assuage them by selling them a fucking blown up UFO. So since we shot that UF uh, that uh that Minnesotan civilian. There you go. You see the USA, they're okay. They're like, "You know what? That guy, we didn't even fucking like him really. We got this bitch in UFO. The, the UFO pieces. It's fine. We love it." We can uh research the pit. I I'm, I'm basically for now because I mean this research goes particularly slow in this in this game so I'm just gonna kind of resign myself to using the human weapons at least for the time being um, and yeah until next time UFO enemy on or what is it, Alien Encounter? Whatever the fuck this game is. This is what we've been playing. We're going to play more of it next time, later. 